Okay, and welcome back. So we're going to do a problem involving the kinematic equations, and it's a car that has an initial velocity, and it has a, an acceleration. Well, in this case here, it's got a deceleration, because it's decelerating at a constant rate of 0.4 meters per second squared. Now, we have to find the distance it takes the car to stop, the time, and the distance traveled in a time interval. So the first thing we notice here is that the units of measure are different. So you've got kilometers per hour versus meters per second. So we've got to convert that right off the bat. So we take the 80 kilometers per hour, and we need to make a relationship between kilometers per hour and meters per second. Well, we know that kilometers must be over here, and one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And the hour, well, there must be an hour up here in order for it to cancel out. Notice this cancels with that. And the hour has to cancel with this hour. And hour and seconds, well, there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. So the hour cancels with the hour. And I get 200 over 9 meters per second. And this is approximately equal to 22.222 meters per second. And this is going to be our V initial. V initial, we'll just say is 22.222 meters per second. Okay, good. So now we've got an acceleration or a deceleration. Um, we've got a V initial, and now we're ready to do the, the first part, which is find the distance it takes the car to stop. Okay, so to find the distance it takes the car to stop, well, let's start this way. Distance to stop. When the car stops, it's going to have a final velocity, right? And that final velocity is going to be V sub F, and that's going to be equal to 0 meters per second. And we know the V initial is going to be 22.222 meters per second. And we know that the acceleration is going to be negative 0.4 meters per second squared. Okay, so we're going to look for delta x. Now, there's no time involved, so that only leaves equation 4, since the other three have time involved in it. So in equation 4, we got to be final, we got to be initial, we got the acceleration, and we're solving for delta x. So let's write this down and solve for delta x. And I guess, well, I'll just write the whole thing out. So we're going to solve for delta x. We're going to move the v squared, the v sub i squared over. So we have v squared sub f minus v sub i squared equal to 2a delta x. Then we're going to divide by 2a, and we get v squared sub f minus v sub i squared. It's equal to delta x. This is all over 2a. And now we just plug things in. So the final velocity is going to be 0 squared minus 22.222 squared. And this is meters per second. So what I'll do is I will write this that way. And we're going to divide that by 2 times negative 0 0.4 meters per second squared. Actually, let me write that a little nicer. And if you put this in your calculator, you'll get 617.27. Well, we'll figure out the units in a second here. I mean, we know we're dealing with delta x, so it's going to be in meters, but we'll show that. So you'll get 617.27. Now, the units are going to be meters squared over second squared. And on the bottom, you're going to have meters over second squared. Well, the second squares cancel out, and one of the meters cancels with the meter at the bottom, and you'll get 617.27 meters. And if you're doing significant digits, or you have to put the significant digits, you're dealing with two significant digits, so that's going to be 80, which has 2, and 0 0.40, which has 2. That means that the 0 counts after the 4. And so that means I need 2 here, so that's going to be 620. 
meters. And this is my delta x. Okay, so now let's see how much time it takes the car to stop. Okay, so for the amount of time it takes the car to stop, well, we need something involving time. So uh, we've got the first three equations, and the car stops. So that means the velocity is going to be zero for the final velocity. So velocity final is equal to zero. Velocity initial, we know that's 22.222 meters per second. And the acceleration, we know, is going to be negative 0.4 meters per second squared. And we need delta t. Okay, well, the only equation that'll work is equation number one. So we need to find delta t for that. So let's go ahead and isolate it. And if you move the V sub i over and divide by a, you get delta t. So therefore, I'll just go ahead and write it out. All right, now we just plug stuff in. So V sub final is going to be 0 minus 22.222 meters per second. And that's all over negative 0 0.4 meters per second squared. Uh, meters cancels with meters. Negative cancels with negative. You'll have second squared on the bottom, which goes to the top, which cancels with the S. So therefore, one of these cancels, and this ends up at the top. So you'll get 55.555 seconds. And with two significant digits, this is 56 seconds. So that means that delta T is equal to 56 seconds. All right, so now we need to find out the distance traveled in the first and fifth second. Uh, again, I'm going to clear this off because I will need a little bit of space. All right, so for that, um, first of all, let's let's look at this. Let's let's find out what does it mean with the first and fifth second. Well, let's say we have this timeline here, right? That's zero. This will be one second. This is two seconds. This is three seconds. This is four seconds. And here's five seconds. Well, in the first second, this is going to be this interval, right? And in the fifth second, let's see, this is one second. This would be two seconds. So this would be one second here. This would be two seconds. This is three. That's four. And that's five. So it's this interval over here. So essentially what we're doing is figuring out, well, we want to know how much distance is traveled within this second and within this one. So let's start off with the things that we know. So we know V initial is equal to 22.222 meters per second. We know our acceleration is negative 0.4 meters per second squared. And we know that our time is going to be a time interval. So let's just say T we know, right? We can call it delta T. So this is going to be some interval. And we're looking for position, so that's going to be like a type of distance. So that would be this right here, right? And so we're looking for this. So the only equation that would use all these, and we have no V final. So if that's the case, then we can use equation number three. That would work great. So let's try it out. So we have delta x is equal to V sub i times delta t plus one-half a delta t quantity squared. Now, we know that our initial position is going to be at zero here, right? And it'll also be at four here, okay? So essentially, we're going to have initial positions. So we can write this as x final minus x initial is equal to v sub i delta t plus one-half a delta t quantity squared. And we'll move the x sub i to the right. So we have our final position, which is essentially what we want. And that's going to be x sub i plus v sub i delta t plus one half a. Let me write that a little better. A delta t quantity squared. Okay, great. So now we've got x sub final. Well, here's the thing. We would have to actually evaluate x sub final at 1, right? And we'd have to evaluate it at 0. 
So essentially this x sub final is like an x of t, right? So we could just replace the x sub f with x of t. Okay, so now this makes sense, right? So you have x sub 1 minus x sub 0, and that basically tells you how far you've gone. So if we're going to do that, in that case, there's going to be two different times, right? A time 1 and a time 2, right? Okay, so since we're dealing with two times that we have to plug in, that would be like x t sub 2 minus x t sub 1. And what we can do is let this equation down here equal x sub d for the distance traveled. And I guess I could put x of 4 here and x evaluated at 5 seconds. Okay, so what we can do now is, I guess in notation-wise, what we can do is substitute the x of t sub 2 with uh, this equation right above it, and then subtract from that, again, the same equation, but with the variable t sub 1 in it. So it's going to look something like this. We'll have x sub i plus v sub i. Well, I guess instead of delta t, we'll just call it t sub 2 plus 1 half a t sub 2 squared. And we're going to subtract from that the second equation, which is going to involve a t sub 1. So distributing the negative sign to this x of t equation, we're going to have minus x sub i minus v sub i t sub 1 this time, minus 1 half a t sub 1 squared. Okay, so I am going to need a little bit of space. Okay, so we have an x sub i and a negative x sub i that cancels out. And so we can also factor out the v sub i's. So v sub i t2 minus t1. And we can factor out the 1 half a's. So we get 1 half a times the quantity t sub 2 squared minus t sub 1 squared. So now we could plug in what we know, the v sub i and the a. So we have x sub d is equal to 22.222. Uh, we'll drop the meters per second since we know it's going to be distance, which will be meters. So that'll be t sub 2 minus t sub 1. And plugging in the a of negative 0.4 will make this negative and 1 half times 0 0.4 is going to be 0 0.2 and that's is t sub 2 squared minus t sub 1 squared. Okay, so now we could just plug in our t sub 2. For the first time interval it's going to be t sub 2 minus t sub 1, so that's going to be we'll plug in a 1 on t sub 2 and a 0, same thing here, a 1 and a 0, and if we do that we're going to end up with and x sub d for the first interval equal to 22.022, and that's meters, and significant digits will be 22 meters. For the second time interval from 4 to 5, t2 will be 5, t1 will be 4, same here, 5 and 4. And if that's the case, then x sub d for that is going to end up being... 20.422 meters, and significant digits, that'll just be 20 meters. Okay, so I guess that takes care of this problem. Uh, the only thing you got to worry about for these type of problems is just making sure that you know which variables you're dealing with, like the unknowns. So there's four unknowns you can deal with, and one of which you won't know. So that'll help you decide which one of the four equations to use. So as always, good luck with your homework and tests in the future, and thank you for watching.